everybody, and welcome back as we continue our 30th anniversary of Mega Man. In the year 21XX, all of the Mavericks have been neutralized thanks to the efforts of a Reploid scientist named Dr. Doppler. Using his neurocomputer, he's been able to suppress any abnormal behavior in the Reploids and prevent them from going berserk. Oh, how nice! Many of the most advanced Reploids have gathered near their new mentor and founded Doppeltown, a perfect utopian community. With Dr. Doppler guiding them, the world seemed ready to enter a new golden age. But this would be a pretty short game if, if that happens, so you know it's all going to go to shit after just a few months. Mavericks, who were supposed to have been neutralized by the neurocomputer, suddenly appeared and began to riot. At Maverick Hunter headquarters, all of the intelligence indicated that Dr. Doppler was the mastermind behind the invasion. Soon the call went out to X and Zero to destroy the invading Mavericks and to bring Dr. Doppler to justice. Maverick Hunter X and Zero, dispatch. A few hours later, emergency contact was made by the headquarters of Maverick Hunter. That sounds like a weird translation thing. Headquarters of Maverick Hunter sounds a little over literal. This is the headquarters of Maverick Hunter, again. We are under attack from the Doppler Force. All units return to base immediately and return fire. Okay, with that intro out of the way, welcome folks to Mega Man X3. I don't know why completely, but I actually do consider this my favorite of the X games. I know a lot of people consider this the weakest entry of... Oh, really? We're... Okay. A lot of people tend to consider this the weakest entry of the, uh, of the original SNES trilogy, but... I don't know. Something about it just... I just really like for for whatever reason. It's... it's I'm not sure I can fully explain it, to be honest. X, I'll clear out the enemies out here. You go ahead and deal with the ones inside. Alright, here we go. So, this game came out relatively late in the Super NES's uh, lifespan, and was also, I think maybe as a result of this, it also received a, um, a version on the PlayStation. Although we never, I don't think we ever, we didn't initially get it in North America. Only in Japan, only Japan and Europe got it. Um, we did eventually get it as part of the uh, Mega Man X collection for the PS2, though. That version. Oh, hold up. Mac, where have you been?
You're far too trusting, X. I'm now a member of Doppler's army. You'll make a fine addition to our forces once you've been shown the true destiny of the Reploid race. Up. Oh. Game over. Thanks for watching, everybody. Up. Oh. Never mind. Okay, so this is a neat little addition of this game. Is this is the first game that enables you to play as Zero. He has mostly the same, similar abilities to X, although he has his Buster. He starts off with a lot more abilities than X, as well as a higher life bar. Plus, he has that. He has that awesome uh, lightsaber. Which happens if you charge up till he flashes green. He gets like he gets the uh, double charge shot like from X2, and then the sword. It's pretty damn awesome. Unfortunately, you well you will be able to call Zero to play as during the le the other levels as well. But there is a big drawback, which I'll be talking about momentarily. But for right now, let's let's take care of Mackie Boy here. You okay, X? Thanks, Zero. I'm okay. I'll check around headquarters again. Be on your guard, X. Okay, so like I was going to say before with the uh, PlayStation version, it has some uh, remixed music, which... You could go... You go online, you want to start an argument among Mega Man fans, go start an argument over whether the Super NES soundtrack of this game or the PlayStation soundtrack was better. You'll have, you'll have plenty of folks on both sides Ones that say the Super NES version was great, the PlayStation version sucked, and vice versa. Me, I'm a little bit more partial to the um, to some of the PlayStation tracks, but but this version wasn't bad by any stretch. There were also some really cool uh, FMV cutscenes, which I'm gonna try to track down and splice into this LP if I can. So under our first boss, he's really similar to the one from X2. Looks big and imposing, but he's otherwise not terribly difficult. About the only thing he does is he he breaks the ground, which there's there's enough of it there, which we don't really have to worry about, like say falling down through the through the floor. It can be hard to tell, it's hard to tell which side he's going to shoot from, but notice he doesn't, he barely does any damage, so it's a complete non-issue. <laughs> Get stuck in the pothole there, Zero. Looks like we've swept most of the enemies. Out of here. I'll go back and check on headquarters. Call me if you need me. See you later, X. Alright, now... Once again, we got the old stage select here. Eight new Mavericks. We got... We got Blast Hornet. Blizzard Buffalo. Gravity Beetle, Toxic Seahorse, Neon Tiger, um, Tunnel Rhino, Crush Crawfish, and Volt Catfish. Might be another reason I like this game. I did think I did think the Maverick designs for this were really cool. In this one. Anyways, one thing I do notice is a lot of the Maverick fights in this game feel a lot harder than they were in most of the other 
the other games, it, it was a lot harder for me to get a good foothold on somebody, but I think the best one to go for first is going to be um, Blizzard Buffalo here. Another thing I liked about this game was the music. It had, again, it had a lot of really good tracks. Blizzard Buffalo's theme here is one of my favorites. And as usual for the for the games in the series, really nice um, graphical presentation as well. The ground here is slippery, so you got to be careful of that. This isn't quite the boss already. We're taken to this an empty room. All of the uh, kind of like the uh, second. Kind of like the second game, there's one of these empty boss rooms, which there's nothing we can do with them for right now. And they're not hidden either. Again, the reason for this will become apparent later on. Right here, we need to make a really perfect jump here. See if I can... Nope, didn't quite make it. Slippery ground here once again makes this... Getting past him difficult. Really? Oh my god. The slipperiness of the ground also I've noticed can really affect the momentum of your of your jumps. And I like I said, I hate that jump. It does not allow you to mess up at all. There we go, made it. We got our first Dr. Light capsule. Another good reason for coming here first. Enter this capsule, X. Take this leg upgrade. The upgrade will enhance your mobility in the air. You will be able to dash left, right, or even straight up into the air. So it's kind of similar to the upgrade from X2 that lets us do a mid-air dash. But it also includes... Yeah, you can you can do a dash straight up, which is kind of cool. So that increases your mid-air mobility even more. Oops. So uh, now that we have that, I want to head back over this way. If I... If I can. Like I said... I think I said these guys can be bastards. Um, 
Okay, now we want to try... There we go, got it. Our first sub-tank of the game. And I have a feeling we will definitely be needing it. Okay, I don't know if I'm going to beat Blizzard Buffalo in my first try and only have health, but we'll give it a shot. Now, as we get... Like I said, I really like the boss designs, but unfortunately, we get into a bit of a... Pro my biggest... My biggest problem with this game is... A lot of the boss fights, despite despite the potential I felt they had, all a lot of them do is dash back and forth like this. He might he might stop to do some attacks once in a while. I'm surprised I've gotten this far. Okay, oh there he goes. He hasn't thrown out his little uh, ice shards yet. Oh there he goes. Wow. Dude, you were pathetic that round. Again, he mostly just dashed back and forth. Didn't really... He didn't do his uh, frost shards near as often. And did his ice beam once, and that was it. <laughs> like I said, a lot of the bosses in this game fall into that problem. I really like this uh, weapon get sequence, though. Almost reminds me of uh, the Ruby Spears cartoon. So we get... This game calls it the Frost Shield, although, as you can see, it doesn't look at all like a shield. It just shoots an icicle. If it hits something, it'll actually fall to the ground and make an ice spike. It has a really good secondary purpose, which will, uh which we'll get into as we uh, head into the next level. Toxic Seahorse has another of my favorite uh, themes for this game. It's a shame that the later X games didn't get any uh, remix. Really, a lot of remixes at all. Just the first game. And note, that, that guy did a lot of damage with those attacks. So, uh, let's see if we can do something about that. Killing enemies with the Frost Shard will almost... Most enemies killed by it will always drop health. Which makes it the weapon of choice for filling your sub-tanks up. Okay, let's, let's get you guys out of the way first. get up here, just keep climbing, and there's our heart tank for this level, which we definitely need. Like I said, I do consider this to be the hardest game of the initial three. Most of the enemies do not play around.
Now over here we have this unusual platform. There's nothing we can do with it for right now, but those will come into play a little bit later as well. Another neat little attention to detail. Use the frost shield underwater, and the, the shards it makes are actually... They're noticeably bigger when you use them underwater. Again, I thought that was a neat little uh, attention to detail. We got us a little mini boss here. We got we got Launch Octopus's uh, short bus cousin. Not a whole lot of... Pretty easy mini-boss, though. Even if the game gives him a... Gives him a unique boss death sequence. Oh yeah, while I'm at it... While it's still in my head... Um... Another thing we should do here... Once we get through here... We'll go to the uh, go to the sub screen. Hit R, and now we can uh, we can select zero here. Once again, plane is zero. He starts off much more powerful than X does. The big the biggest problems with zero, however, are he's kind he feels he's really kind of a crutch for the early game. I think. Um. You can only play as Zero up until you reach a boss door. So, what that means is you can only play as Zero for about one third of any given level, after which you can't play him again for the rest of the stage. And he can't be used to fight bosses or mini bosses. Um, in addition, he can't use any he can't use any Maverick weapons, and he only has one life. If you die as zero, he's done for the entire rest of the rest of the game. You won't be able to select him. Fortunately, the later X games would rectify this and make zero fully playable for the rest of the game. And in fact, a few years ago, I did a uh, ROM hack of this game that that hacks it so that zero is fully playable the whole game here as well. I hear that game has seen some updates, so I want to get to that to do again eventually. Anyways, Toxic Seahorse. Um, again, jumps around. If we, if we do shoot him with his weakness, he'll mostly just bounce back and forth. He shoots those, these little acid bubbles. Which, which can can be kind of difficult. You gotta watch out for those. Oh, damn it. Okay. When, once his health gets down low enough, he then starts. He spits out these those bubbles that bounce along the ground, and then he also melts into the floor. And which you can't hurt him during that period. Um... Oh, bitch! I was... Thought I could get him before he... Okay. That was my fault. I spent too much time dicking around with him, rather than... Actually fight him seriously, in which case... is usually a bad idea for the bosses in this game anyways, because they deal a lot... They deal so much damage from just about everything. Like I said, normally... It can be hard to get to get a foothold for that reason because they are so difficult to beat without any uh, any upgrades. Okay.
once you have their weaknesses and and some like some heart tank upgrades and stuff, they're usually not as bad. But right at the beginning of the game, it can be pretty tough. So from him we get the Acid Burst. We shoot these uh, Acid Globules that splash around. If you remember my Mega Man 5 for the Game Boy playthrough, it's very much like the Saltwater weapon. Oh, but now we get us a cutscene. He is the Maverick Hunter I failed to catch last time. I had no idea he's so powerful. Bit and bite. Huh? We got hit. We got Doppler's little mini boss squad. Bit and bite. Also, I've heard them referred to as the Nightmare Police. Bring that Maverick Hunter to me, alive if possible. Affirmative, Dr. Doppler. Oh, oh, who's this? Mysterious Maverick. <laughs> you, you don't even bother to silhouette him all the way, as if there is any... As if there is any mystery as to who he is. Alive, Dr. Dobbler. You're so kind. Watch your mouth or I'll put you back where I found you. Even with your enhancements, you're still no match for me. Thanks for the upgrade, Doctor, but I got a score to settle. And I'll do it my way. Fine, just make sure you do it. I still can't believe that Maverick Hunter defeated my master twice in the past. Oh. Gee, I wonder who he's talking about now. Gee, game, you're really, uh... You're really killing all the, uh, suspense here, aren't you? Okay, I think we might have enough time for one more level. I don't think I'm going to be able to do, do like, four in this video, four in the next, but let's see. Next on my list I usually go for is going to be Tunnel Rhino. Tunnel Rhino, he gets, he kind of gets the short end of the stick as far as, uh, as far as his stage mute is concerned. A lot of people really did not like his music. It is, this one drones on pretty repetitively. Not anywhere near as, as interesting as most of the others. Over here... There's our hard tank, but there's nothing we can do about that rock in the way. Just yet, anyway. These, uh... I guess that's mud or something that... that falls through that. If, if you run into it, it will push you straight down. In this case, into the spikes. Just like that.
There's an easy sub tank for us that time. I guess you don't drop any health. Okay, let's see if we get lucky or unlucky. Unlucky! Damn it! Welcome, X. I'm Bit. I have my orders. You are to be destroyed. Okay, so we have to fight one of the Nightmare Police already, and he's trying to fight him this early can be extremely tough to do. Especially, well, you always fight Bit first, no matter what. There, there will always each level there will be a chance of either Bit, a Bit or Bite appearing in one of these rooms. Okay, I think I've got him in a pretty good... Maybe? Okay, come on. I think... Do we have him locked in a pretty good pattern? Got him! Good! Thank you! This Reploid's special abilities are too... No, no, it can't be! Ugh. Okay, so the way these guys work... If you, if you defeat him with his weakness... For both Bit and Bite, if you defeat them with their weakness, you actually kill them in your first fight with them. And you won't... And, uh, doing it this way actually does affect, um, some of the events that happen later on in the game. Which I'll explain more of once we, uh, once we actually get to that part. Suckered by that. Another rock in the way. Another one we'll have to keep in mind for later. As if Bit wasn't enough, we have another mini boss to contend with. Okay, now I think. Oh. Okay, no, that's not the way I want to do this. Okay, go down there. What I want to do is, he's going to... I want to get him to where he'll just, uh... He'll just dash into the wall like this, over and over. It does... It does knock you off the wall if he dashes it. But, I think I'm pretty... I can manage it so I don't get back... Oh, no, shit. When he goes up like that, that makes it... That makes him almost impossible to avoid. And that's... He, he'll... I know he does that if you try to, uh... If you try to climb the wall too high. Which is why I'm trying to stay down here. There we go, got him. Damn. I'm doing pretty good in this. I, again, I don't have access to many, uh, upgrades or heart tanks or whatnot. Trying to do the gauntlet of Bit, um, that guy, and then Tunnel Rhino at the end is not always an easy task. Get some of these guys to drop health. Ugh, I'm and now I'm getting very unlucky with that. No. Oh, 
wait, I should, uh... Can I... Can I get... Can I get some kills with the Acid Burst? I think... I think enemies that you kill with the Acid Burst will always drop weapon energy. Although... Shit. I'm not sure it's quite as reliable. Okay, at least I made it to Tunnel Rhino this time. See how this goes. But once, yeah, oh yeah, right. Once again, he shakes the wall when he dashes into it. So, so trying to just sitting there and hugging the wall isn't gonna work. And as you can see, he's another one of those bosses that mostly just dashes back and forth. Sometimes he'll do that, where he'll, uh, he'll go invincible. Okay, and th now that's... Kudos to that. Sometimes, sometimes he'll fake out like that and go the other way. He is not using his... Haha. <laughs> Was on to you that time. Oh, got him. Okay. I wasn't going to toy around with him and wait for him to actually use his, like, his uh, Tornado Fang or anything like that, because, since I was almost dead. And again, that's, that is pretty clever there, having him, like, fake you out like that. So from him we got the Tornado Fang, we shoot like a, like a little drill missile. It can, uh, it does, it basically does continuous damage on enemies it hits, but the main reason for getting it is it can break through certain walls, which will definitely be useful. Anyways, I think this is a good place to call it. I'll see you guys next time as we continue Mega Man X3. See you guys later. I'm playing a game.